Introduction Do you know that among the planets of our solar system, it is only our Earth which has life on it? Yes, it is because existence of life depends on certain ambient atmospheric conditions, temperature, water, air and food which are available only on the Earth. The resources available on the Earth are necessary to meet the basic requirement of all life forms on the earth. In addition, the energy from the sun is also necessary for all living organisms on the earth. Biosphere is the life supporting system of earth's surface extending from a few miles into the atmosphere to the deep sea vents of oceans. Resources on earth are land, water and air. Natural resources are components of atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere. The physical part of biosphere is divided into three main groups, lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere. Lithosphere includes the solid components of the earth's crust, soil, rock, minerals and other masses. Only outer layer of earth's crust called soil contains the living organisms and forms part of biosphere. Hydrosphere includes all aquatic components, the ponds, rivers, lakes and the seas. Water covers about 75% of the total earth surface. Water is also found underground. Atmosphere includes gaseous cover around the hydrosphere and lithosphere like a blanket. Atmosphere extends to several kilometers in height from the surface of Earth. It is differentiated into four parts, troposphere, stratosphere, ozonosphere, ionosphere. So we can say biosphere is formed mainly of two components. Biotic components, all living things, abiotic components, air, water and the soil. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Understand the breath of life, air Find out the role of the atmosphere in climate control Understand the movements of air, wind Understand the rain Understand the air pollution Find out properties of water, a wonder liquid Understand the water pollution Animal Husbandry We all know that air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Due to this mixture, life on earth is possible. Earth's surface is dominated by nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, carbon dioxide and other gases 0.03% Inert gases, argon, 0.93% Water vapor, 0.01% We already know that the living organisms may be eukaryotic cells or prokaryotic. So, the cells need oxygen to break down glucose molecules and get energy for their activities. This results in the production of carbon dioxide. One more process which results in the consumption of oxygen and the production of carbon dioxide is combustion. Combustion is either result of human activities or forest fires. Although carbon dioxide is produced in huge amount by various activities, even then, the percentage of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is mere fraction of a percent. This fixed percentage of carbon is because carbon dioxide is fixed in two ways. First, the green plants take in and convert carbon dioxide into glucose in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. Second is, many marine animals use carbonates dissolved in seawater to make their shells. The role of the atmosphere in climate control. We have already discussed that the atmosphere covers the earth like a blanket. 
We also know that air is a bad conductor of heat. The atmosphere prevents the sudden increase in temperature during the daylight hours. The atmosphere keeps the average temperature of the earth fairly steady during the day and even during the course of the whole year. And during the night, it slows down the escape of heat into outer space. Earth and moon both are about the same distance from the sun. But on moon with no atmosphere, the temperature ranges from 190 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. The movement of air, winds. How many of you have visited seashore? You all might have felt cool evening breezes and the relief brought by these breezes after a hot day. Similarly, when there is rainfall after hot weather, then we get a great relief. The movement of air is due to the heating of air and when there are water vapors present in the air, then it becomes a gentle breeze. Water vapor is formed due to the heating of water bodies and the activities of living organisms. The atmosphere can be heated from below by the radiation that is reflected back or re-radiated by the land or water bodies. On being heated, convection currents are set up in the air. The movement of air, winds. When air is heated by radiation from the heated land or water, it rises. But since land gets heated faster than water, the air over land would also be heated faster than the air over water bodies. So, if we look at the situation in coastal regions during the day, the air above the land gets heated faster and starts rising. As this air rises, a region of low pressure is created and air over the sea moves into this area of low pressure. The movement of air from one region to the other creates winds. During the day, the direction of the wind would be from the sea to the land. At night, both land and sea start to cool. Since water cools down slower than the land, the air above water would be warmer than the air above land. All the movements of air resulting in diverse atmospheric phenomena are caused by the uneven heating of the atmosphere in different regions of the earth. Some other factors which also influence these winds are the rotation of the earth and the presence of mountain ranges in the paths of the wind. Rain We all know that the warm, moist and rising air cools and forms clouds in the sky. So we can see that cloud formation is caused due to heating of water bodies during daytime which get mixed with atmosphere. When the hot air rises, it expands and cools. Cool air in the atmosphere sinks towards the ground. Due to cooling, water vapors present in the air take the shape of small droplets. Dust particles present in the air act as a nucleus and the process of condensation starts. These tiny droplets become larger and larger due to the continuous process of condensation. When these clouds become heavy, they fall down in the form of rain. Sometimes when the temperature of air is low enough, precipitation may occur in the form of snow, sleet or hail. Rainfall patterns are decided by the prevailing wind patterns. In large parts of India, rains are mostly brought by the southwest or northeast monsoons. We often hear weather reports that say depressions in the Bay of Bengal have caused rains in some areas. Air pollution. These days, pollution word is very common. But what does this mean? Let me tell you. Pollution is any undesirable change in physical, chemical and biological properties of our environment, that is, air, water and land, which causes harmful effects to various forms of life and property. While a pollutant is a substance, 
chemical or factor that on release to environment has a bad effect on human interests. Pollutant can be defined as constituent in wrong amount at the wrong place or wrong time. Air pollution is the occurrence of foreign particles or gases in the atmosphere which are harmful to man, vegetation, animals and buildings. The air pollution is caused mainly due to combustion of fossil fuels. The fossil fuels like coal and petroleum contain small amounts of nitrogen and sulfur. When these fuels are burned, nitrogen and sulfur too are burned and this produces different oxides of nitrogen and sulfur. Not only is the inhalation of these gases dangerous, they also dissolve in rain to give rise to acid rain. Combustion of fossil fuels increases the amount of suspended particles in the air. These particles may be unburnt carbon particles or substances like hydrocarbons. Presence of high levels of all these pollutants cause poor visibility, especially in the cold weather when water also condenses out of air. This is known as smog and is visible indication of air pollution. Regular breathing air, which contains any of these substances, increases the incidence of allergies, cancer and heart diseases. Water, a wonderful liquid. Water occupies a very large area of the Earth's surface and is also found underground. Some amount of water exists in the form of water vapor in the atmosphere. 97% of the water on Earth's surface is found in seas and oceans and is saline. 1% of fresh water is found on the Earth. 2% of fresh water is found frozen in the ice caps at the two poles and on snow-covered mountains. The underground water and the water in rivers, lakes and ponds is also fresh. The availability of fresh water varies from place to place. During summer season, most places have to face a shortage of water. Importance of Water Water is so necessary because all organisms require it. All cellular processes take place in a water medium. All the reactions that take place within our body and within the cells occur between substances that are dissolved in water. Water is required for transportation of substances from one part of the body to the other in a dissolved form. Hence, organisms require to maintain the level of water within their bodies in order to stay alive. Terrestrial life forms require fresh water for this because their bodies cannot tolerate or get rid of high amounts of dissolved salts in saline water. Thus, water sources need to be easily accessible for animals and plants to survive on land. Water pollution is the addition of some substances which degrades the quality of water so that either it becomes healthy or unfit for use. The fertilizers and pesticides that we use on our farms are dissolved in water, so some percent of these substances are washed into the water bodies. Sewage from our towns and cities and the waste from factories are also dumped into rivers or lakes. Some industries also use water for cooling in various operations and later return this hot water to water bodies. The temperature of the water in rivers can be affected when water is released from dams. The water inside the deep reservoir would be colder than the water at the surface which gets heated by the sun. All this can affect the life forms that are found in these water bodies in various ways. It can encourage the growth of some life forms and harm some other life forms. This affects the balance between various organisms which had been established in that system. Water pollution causes following effects. The addition of undesirable substances to water bodies. 
These could also be disease-causing organisms like the bacteria which causes cholera. The removal of desirable substances from water bodies. Any change that reduces the amount of this dissolved oxygen would adversely affect these aquatic organisms. Other nutrients could also be depleted from the water bodies. A change in temperature. Aquatic organisms are used to a certain range of temperature in the water body where they live and a sudden marked change in this temperature would be dangerous for them or affect their breeding. The eggs and larva of various animals are particularly susceptible to temperature changes. Did you know Statue of Liberty is corroded from SO2 and NO2 and Taj Mahal from SO2 emitted by Mathura refinery. SO2 increases the chances of occurrence of asthma, bronchitis, etc. In 1920 in Japan, 200 people were killed in Itai Itai disease, which occurred due to cadmium poisoning. 5th June is celebrated as World Environment Day since 1989. 16th September is celebrated as International Day for Preservation of Ozone Layer. First week of October is celebrated as Wildlife Week. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Life on Earth depends on resources like soil, water and air and the energy from the sun. Uneven heating of air over land and water bodies causes winds. Evaporation of water from water bodies and subsequent condensation give us rain. Rainfall patterns depend on the prevailing wind patterns in an area.